Ace Red Fox leader to all flights. The drop looked good. Close those holes. Stay tight. The Fox Street leader, Bandits, one o'clock high. All right, keep them outside. Red Fox 3 on fire. Request permission to fly escort. Negative. Do not break formation. Acknowledge. Red Fox leader to Red Fox 2. How do you read me? Over. My radio's out. How about yours? Sir, Red Fox 2 lead in formation. Shall I repeat your orders, sir? If they didn't hear me the first time, they won't hear me now. Halfway stunned to pilot. They're bailing out, sir. Pilot to crew. Pilot to gunners. Keep them off the chutes. Two bandits moving in at nine o'clock. Starring Frank Overton and John Larkin, with guest stars Glenn Corbett, Lou Antonio, Sally Kellerman, and special appearance by Hazel Court as Liz. Tonight's episode, The Men and the Boys. Minus four. Fire and McGinnis got it over the target. And Lockridge. Make that minus three, Major. They've got wounded aboard.
Jonesy caught a couple of bad ones, sir, but he's alive. The rest of the crew in the plane are fine. We? I think Tom made it. We counted eight parachutes out of Red Fox 3. The Jerry's picked off one in the air, but Tom and the rest of the crew made it down. Of course, once they hit the ground, I don't know what happened. Good going, Wade. Great. 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 Captain Ritchie. Yes, sir. Did you hear my order not to break formation? Well, things are pretty hot and heavy up there for a while, sir. Are you reporting radio failure, Captain? Well, no, not exactly that. Exactly what, then? Sir, Tommy Lockridge and his crew were dead meat hanging out there like that. Major. Sir? Starting immediately, Captain Ritchie will be grounded and restricted to the base, pending court martial proceedings. <laughs> What? General Crow called. Mm. But you're going to give me an argument on Captain Ritchie. Do you want one, sir? What did the general want? He said he'd drive down here to see you tonight right after he's reviewed this mission's bomb strike photos. All right. No, there is one thing, uh, Major. I want you to write up a DFC for Tom Lockridge. Just pray it doesn't have to be awarded posthumously. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Miss Woodruff returned your call. Liz? I didn't call her. Yes, sir. From the tone of her voice, I gather that's what she meant. We can't afford any mistakes, Frank. Not here, not now. Maybe in a year when our air cadets are trained, our factories have built planes for them to fly, but right now we need every bomb on target. It takes men and planes to deliver those bombs, Riley. You trade too many of them away on each target, and we're not going to make it to next year. That's right, Frank. That's my business. I'm trading lives for time. Call them lives. Numbers on a report. You don't have to look at their faces. Show me another way. Any other way. I'll use it. All right, I gave you the dirtiest job around here. You're entitled to thank me for it. I'm sorry, forgive me. You get your missions one at a time, Frank. But you don't know about the ball bearing plant that has to be leveled, or the marshalling yards that should be destroyed so we can cut into their rail freight. They have got more targets than we've got planes. Would you like a drink, one? No, if I took a drink every time I felt like it, I'd be drunk by noon. Though we had to hold somewhere with what we've got. So we picked their oil reserves. Now that's what makes Hitler's Blitzkrieg go. His planes, his armor, his rolling stock. If we can hurt him in his gas tank, he has to pause and blink a while. Yeah, well, brings us right back to time. Mm -hmm. You and I, Frank, those kids out there, we can't win this war this year, or maybe in five years. But if we don't hold on until they send us more men and muscle, we can lose this war right here, right now. This is the main gate. Will you please inform General Savage that Lieutenant Lockridge has just returned to the base. Hey, Lockridge, you back! Tom Lockridge! Tom, Tom, buddy, how are you? As you were. The sergeants, lieutenants, good to see you back. Thank you, sir. The British mine layer fished us out of the drink. Lieutenant Greer, Sergeants Klein and Henshaw are being kept another night at the British Field Hospital in Dover. Hi, Liv. Uh, but they're fine, sir. Thanks to our hero here.
What's the matter? Wade is being court-martialed for what he did. That'll be enough, Lieutenant. Well, now, wait a minute. I, I don't understand. That's right, Tom. Those were my orders. You mean you're punishing him for saving our lives? No. For disobeying a direct order in the face of the enemy. Well, now, wait just a minute. Lockridge! He's had a rough time, sir. I'd take that into account. All right. says that once I swallow it, it wouldn't have any place to go. have been together ever since cadet training at Randolph. It wasn't just somebody in trouble when Wade did what he did. It was his closest friend. You mean he had a better excuse to do what he'd been ordered not to do? What he knew was wrong. Is it wrong to want to save your best friend's life? No, not to want to, Lieutenant. But to risk his crew is plain. To weaken the integrity of the entire formation to satisfy that personal want, that's wrong. He didn't lose his plane and crew, except for Jonesy getting wounded. And he did save seven lives. Oh, thank God for that, Lieutenant. I mean that literally. It's a miracle those fighters didn't tear him apart. Maybe Wade's skill had something to do with that. He's a fine pilot. You can't deny that. Oh, I don't deny that. If there's anything I need right now, it's good pilots. But I'm no longer sure he's a good officer. Just as I am sure Tom Lockridge is. Fine. Then think of Tom. Did you know that he and Wade had decided to make the Air Corps their career? Well, Wade can't do that now, not with a court-martial on his record. And Tom, if this is Air Corps justice, he doesn't want any part of it. Just where does this leave you, Lieutenant? Me? Mm-hmm. I mean, Tom's choice has a lot to do with your future. That's why you took me on like this, isn't it? Part of the reason, yes. The Air Corps is what he wants, so I want it for him. But I want his life first. And Wade gave me back that life. I'll never forget that, General, never. And neither will Tom, because he knows if things were turned around, he'd do just the same thing for Wade. Under the circumstances, I don't think he would. Well, then you don't know Tom very well. Well, one of us doesn't, Lieutenant. Pete, how's that replacement navigator of yours working out? 
Oh, he'll do, sir. Yeah, excuse me, I promised to join some of the gang. Buy you a drink, General? Aren't you afraid you get leprosy, Army? Not as long as Don Kaiser doesn't run out of aspirin. They're the ones who are afraid. But they're very young. Because they're very young, they have to pretend they're not afraid. The result is arrogance. Did you see the bomb strike photos of today's mission? I heard they were very bad. Pilots came in too fast. Bombardiers let go too soon, too late. It was one big hurry of a mess. Well, this was the first mission since the Wade business. What does that mean? They're trying to get even with me? That's not arrogance, Harvey. That's suicide. Well, they feel they have to take care of themselves because you won't let them take care of each other. Well, if they're all that young, Major, then none of us is likely to get any older. Thanks for the cheer. Well, there goes our fearless leader. He's got a lot of courage when it comes to spilling our blood. Yeah. He's like a traffic cop giving out tickets. If he doesn't lose a few of us flyboys every mission, it shows he's just not really trying. <laughs> now, is that supposed to be funny? Funny? I'm crying. Tom? Um. I know. Look, I'm no cheerleader for Savage, but you gotta admit he rides front end on the toughest shots we get. And we all know he doesn't have to go at all if he doesn't want to. Well, that's just because he doesn't trust us to put on a good show, you know. So he can get another star on his shoulder. Now, that's bull, Wade. He could swivel a chair at staff and get his promotions with no sweat. Now, wait a minute, pal. Let's not forget one thing. If you're a wonderful commanding officer had his way, you wouldn't be sitting where you are right now. I'm sorry, I didn't... Look, I don't want you to think that you have to feel... That's okay. I had that one come. I get it. Well, I'm gonna call it a night. You gonna hang around? See you tomorrow. I'm a real slob. Did you hear me in there? Defending Savage against a friend who saved my life? What's the matter with me, Lib? You feel sorry for Savage, don't you? And not for Wade? Well, of course I do. That's not the... Savage didn't have to throw the book at Wade. He just didn't have to. But he's no cartoon officer either. Not the way they were making him look. Lib, I just don't know how I feel about anything anymore. No, honey, you, you know I didn't mean you. How long have they been in there? Forty minutes. What about Jonesy? Well, he came through surgery better than last time. We'll just have to wait and see. Lieutenant, isn't it true that as a cadet, Captain Ritchie was disciplined for performing non-authorized stunt maneuvers while on a flight? Yes, sir. He was, in fact, showing off, wasn't he? I wouldn't say what that... What would you say, Lieutenant, about a pilot who leaves his fellow trainees and drops out of flight formation to buzz some girl who is taking a sun bath in her backyard? I'd say like girls. 
Yes, I'm sure. In fact, you and the other cadets thought Captain Ritchie was one big man. Yes, sir, we did. And most of us still do. You think that's why he did and still does things like that? Objection. Asking for conclusion. Withdraw the question. Can you tell me, Lieutenant, why, when you and the defendant were graduate cadets, why he protested so vigorously and in writing, being assigned to a bomber group? He wanted to fly fighters. In other words, be on his own. Well, lots of guys prefer... Thank you, Lieutenant. No more questions. Defense calls Captain Wade Ritchie. Well? Well, it was a great fight, Ma, but we lost. You knew they'd have to back Savage. How bad was it? Not too bad, they said. I could have been shot. And I lose three months' pay. I'm restricted to the base indefinitely, and... Well, I don't need these anymore. Wait. Lieutenant Ritchie reporting his ordered, sir. That is, Lieutenant. I read your request for transfer. You didn't waste any time, did you? No, sir. I figured I wasn't doing myself or anybody else any good around here. Yeah, well, that's for me to worry about, not you. Even if I wanted to, I wouldn't ship a man out to another bomb group the day after I court-martialed him. Uh, yes, sir. That's why I made a special point of saying it was all right with me if I was transferred out of the Air Corps, into the infantry or something. Well, at the moment, there isn't any need for American infantry in Europe, Lieutenant. Well, the Pacific could suit me fine, sir. The Air Corps is not interested in suiting you fine, Lieutenant. We expect it to be the other way around, which is why you were trained at great expense for almost a year. There is a need for American pilots in Europe. A very bad need. Well, sir, I'm sorry about that, but... but we won't let you play heroes, so you've decided to chuck it. Well, we don't need heroes, Lieutenant. One good broken field run won't win the game, because this isn't a game. It's survival out there. Not just for you and me, but for a whole frightened world. And survival for us means every man doing the job he knows best, every day, for weeks, months, maybe even years. That's what you're going to do, Lieutenant, the job you know best. When you are told, the way you are told, whether you like it or not. You're dismissed, Lieutenant. Martinis and cheap wine didn't paralyze you. This is guaranteed to do the job. Don't you think I need, Liz? Well, I don't know what you need. That's the secret of my failure. And it was a marvelous dinner. I'm glad you were free. I wasn't. <laughs> yes, sir. What's the matter? What's the matter? I'm, I'm enjoying myself. That's why you don't recognize me. Uh-uh. Come on. Tell me. Uh. Liz, did you ever do the right thing? I, you knew it was right. It turned out all wrong. 
maybe I've been penny-wise and pound foolish. I was building a top outfit, Liz. No better in the whole commandos. Those guys would they'd fly through a brick wall for me. And I had to let the whole thing go to pieces. Just to do the right thing about one sour apple. Sounds stupid. You sound very tired. And very, very human. Yes? A major stove out for you. Yes, Harvey, what is it? Now? Major, it is after nine o'clock. General. Liz, I'm sorry. You know it's important. I know what isn't. I'll call you in the morning. Good night. Frank. Frank. It's not you. No, oh, it's just the war I'm mad at. Will you really call me tomorrow? Or was that just a pat on the head? Mm, just a pat on the head. Howdy, Lieutenant. General, I thought we might handle this here tonight. Handle what? This is a copy of a letter Lieutenant Lockridge wrote to 8th Air Force Headquarters. I'm holding the original. You want to turn down the DFC I recommended you for, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Why? Because I don't deserve it. He knows this will trigger an investigation which will make you look bad no matter how it's resolved. All right, Lieutenant. Tell General Savage the rest of it. In the action cited, I did no more than anyone else would have done to save his own life. If anyone acted above and beyond the call of duty, it was Captain... I mean, Lieutenant Ritchie. I feel it's a matter of justice. I tried to tell him that this kind of malicious vendetta no, no, cannot... No, never mind, Major. I think this letter should be released to continue through the proper channels. Yes, sir. He has a right to his opinion. As for Lieutenant Lockridge, I have nothing more to say to him. That will be all, Lieutenant. It will be rough, sir. It's been rough before, Harvey. I don't care about that. I just thought Tom Lockridge was a certain kind of man. That hurts more to me wrong about that. Hi. Where's Libby, do you know? Assisting in surgery. Well, wasn't she supposed to get off duty at 4.30? A last-minute emergency. It 
was Jonesy, Tom. He seemed to be improving, and then all of a sudden... We'll have to wait for pathology to tell us what went wrong. to the lounge for some coffee. Tom? Tom? Tom, it's nobody's fault. No, it's somebody's fault. He didn't have to be dead. He could have been alive if Wade hadn't come after me. Not just you. You and six other men. You all could have been dead instead of Jonesy. Maybe. Maybe not all, maybe just me. And maybe Wade could have been dead, too, and his crew. But there are no more maybes for Jonesy, are there? He's just dead. You can't blame yourself. No, I wish I could. Wade killed him, Libby. Whether he did it for me or anybody else, he had no right to trade away Jonesy's life. That's not fair. He risked his own life, too. He had no right to do that, either. He commanded a plane with nine other men in it, in a formation with 200 other men. Now, he wasn't just trained to fly. He was trained to fight with those nine men and those 200 men. And Jonesy was trained to depend upon Wade's judgment. And now Jonesy's dead because Wade violated that trust, don't you see? I see that you're alive because your best friend risked his life and ruined his career. That's what I see. What are you going to do? Jonesy's dead. You can't change that. And all you can do is punish Wade a lot more than he's already been punished. Sir, uh, let's go, Frank. Tom, you knew whatever way it did, right or wrong, it did it for you. They're not sure. Well, if they'd hit an oil convoy, they'd be sure, especially at night. All right, we'll try to incorporate it. RAF is putting up a maximum effort against the oil depots we know about. But by now, the enemy is beginning to get the picture, so they're looking to protect the ones we don't know about. And that's what French underground intelligence has been waiting for. Mm -hmm. Here is your target, General. Twelve miles southeast of Rennes. Yes, sir. I'll get our own G2 on it right away. Well, good idea, Major. We'll see in operations half an hour. The maximum effort. That's what RAF has got going for them right now. We have to match it in the morning. How many planes can you put up? Twenty. We need better than that. Well, I could get the ground crews to make about a half a dozen cripples serviceable. And get flying personnel to film. Find them, Frank. Check the rest camps, the replacement depots. There must be some men waiting for reassignment. We don't need green kids or guys getting over combat fatigue. Not on this one. Frank, we need everything in the air over that target. Now, six more from you, six from each of the other groups can make the difference. What about Wade Ritchie? He's flying co-pilot. I won't put him in command of a crew, Wiley. Like him or not, he's an experienced pilot. And a good one. Yeah, my own co-pilot has the experience to move up, so is Lassiter's and Morrison's. I use the replacements to back up the veterans. And who flies with you? Wade Ritchie. Even though you don't trust him? Frank, don't ask for trouble. All right, don't give me any. Navigator to pilot. 
Two minutes to IP. Roger. Pilot to bombardier. Stand ready to open Bombay doors. Bombay doors open, sir. Pilot to bombardier. It's your airplane, Mike. Roger. Turn to the right. Close it up. Prepare for fighters as soon as we leave flak area. Bandits, three o'clock high. Four engine out. I'm trying to feather. I think his shoulder's busted. Left waist gunner to pilot. Bandits. Eight, nine o'clock high. Arrowhead leader to all flights. Holding altitude. Can't maintain speed. Slow up to keep us in formation. Over. Red Arrow 1 to Arrowhead Leader. Wade, we're all low on fuel. We've got to try and make a run for home. How bad is Savage? Over. He's out cold, maybe dying. Tailgunner to pilot. Five, six, seven o'clock. Tom, the rest of us are dead for sure. If you run out on us now, they're coming at us every which way. We don't stand a chance alone. Tom goes back. We'll go with him. Savage makes it. Let's see if he court marshals us all for saving his life. Red Arrow 1 to Arrowhead pilot. Can't break formation and risk crew to attempt rescue. Maintaining speed and flight plan. Wade Chrysler, if you can. No, I didn't tell you that when it was your life. I didn't throw you to the wolves. I went and got you. That's enough. Take it down to treetop level. Leader to all flights. Proceed back to base according to flight plan. I said take her down. We won't be able to bail out if I take her down. We're not bailing out. Why? Because you can't make the jump? It's not just me. Why don't you ask the rest of the crew if they want to bail out or commit suicide with you? I don't put decisions to a vote. Now you rule us now, we'll never get enough. All right. All right. Now we got her down on deck. Those fighters can't can't dive past us without hitting bottom. Also, that means I can't come up under us. So, Jimmy, come up out of the turret and get on the nose guns. Mike, do you think you can use Larry's chest to take us home? Yes, sir. All right, get on. Bandit, 7 o'clock high. All right, split him up, Tony. Joe, Ben, pick him up going by. Mountains around us. Should be some about 20 miles on our left. All right, find them. Keep them on our left so they can't come at us that way. 12 degrees right, we lose the mountains, and then we should see water. Roger. You got that? 
A gang of bandits, Skipper, 12 o'clock high. Wait a minute. As you were, there are some B-47s. This is Buckshot Charlie, B-17. We'll take it from here. Go on home. what happened up there. Sir, Lieutenant Blockridge asked me to scrap the letter refusing his DFC. He deserves another one. What he had to do up there was tougher than my problem. Hey, Wiley. You know, if this war lasts long enough, you might keep that young man in mind for my job. <laughs> Get him into bed. That's an order. Here now are scenes from future episodes. All right, who? The senator from the States. Clayton Johnson? Yes, sir. However, you know what Clay Johnson said to me the last time I saw him? He said, Savage, the first night I met you, I should have taken my gun and I should have shot you through the head. General, that's and not the next fair. time you try to kill yourself, Denver. You find the bridge someplace and you jump off it alone. Those nine men you tried to take with you today might have had other plans. Let's go. Let's go. Frank, can you try a touch and go landing to test the gear? <laughs> well, Ali, it's going to be touch and go, all right. My number two engine just went, but only one landing to a customer. I'm coming straight in. Here we come. 